Juan Soto getting a million dollars for winning, um, and uh, that's chump change. It's interesting that Rodriguez made more money last night than he's going to make in his minimum year contract this year. But what is the deal with Soto? Why, why, why are he and uh, Washington seemingly on the verge of parting ways here, Carl? Well, I, I think it's multifaceted. I think that there's, I think it was a sincere offer. Um, I think that the sale of the Nationals is a big deal. I think any prospective owner coming in would like to make sure that that stuff is taken care of. Um, look, you can look at it from both sides. He's he's obviously one of the great young players in the game. He's uniquely talented with his ability to, to recognize strikes and balls. He can elevate the baseball. But baseball, and we know this from years, is not an individual sport. Uh, at some point, you, you can't allow your franchise to have such a percentage of the salary be spent on one guy. And look, he does, given where we are economically, he's going to get four or five hundred million dollars over whatever length of time this contract goes. But Mike Trout hasn't been in the playoffs, let alone hmm. threatened the World Series. And he is the unquestioned best baseball player on the planet. If Soto is a notch down from him, well, how much money do we commit to one player and who are we going to be able to surround him with? And if we're going to get, you know, what, what the Marlins uh, got when they let Miguel Cabrera go years ago and a couple of really good pitchers and major league ready players, well, do, are, are we better off? And, and those are legitimate questions. Um, it was odd. I mean, I don't know what you saw yesterday, but. Soto sitting there answering questions and literally kind of lurking over his his left shoulder is Scott Boris, <laughs> <laughs> kind of filtering the questions, hearing what people are asking, making sure that Soto is is not going to misspeak. Um, that that was that was an interesting look yesterday. So I you know I, I look I see both sides of it. Um, he's still got a year and two, two years left, you know. So I, it's unique uh, and it's unique to baseball that. One guy who's two years out of free agency is is turning down $440 million over 15 years. And for the next two weeks, he's the biggest story in baseball. And it's not close. So what do you think it'll take? Uh, we were just, uh, we opened the show by saying uh, anybody who's been, you know, planning for the future, as every general manager does in baseball, can take a look at their, what, top two, three prospects and say, vaya con Dios? Right? I mean, wouldn't that be it? Or what, what do you think it would take, at least, to get him? So, I, yeah, I, I look, the, the comp is, is Cabrera. Um, I think that was two, two really good players, and they took on the contract of Dontrell Willis uh, at the same time. Um, it's a hard one to say because I don't think, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be, you know, avoiding the question here. Sure. Um, and I'm not even sure why it got to a place where two years removed from free agency, this, this is even a conversation. Uh, we're really going to expedite a deal for Juan Soto, and it appears, according to people that, that I know Buster only has spoken with, e even I casually kind of getting the room's feel, said, no, he's going. Like, this is happening in the next two weeks. has to do as much with who's going to own the team um, as, as the present. Yeah, I think two or three – Major league ready players now. Um, Mike Rizzo is really good at his job. He doesn't lose trades, but this is a hard one to judge, and it will take three or four or five years to judge whether they did really well or or they got fleeced. Um, but yeah, two, three really major league ready players with a couple of prospects. And if you start to ask, well, who's who's in position to do that? The Padres, the St. Louis Cardinals. I think the Bonds experience in San Francisco brings them into the picture. I think, look, Julio Rodriguez and where the Mariners are now and where they're going is another possibility. And if I'm Steve Cohen or if I'm the richest owner in baseball, <laughs> I'm certainly going to my, my guy, Sandy Alderson, and saying, look, let's say money isn't a factor. Because <laughs> for me, it ain't. How, how much are we going to – how much is it going to cost us to get involved in this Juan Soto thing? And, and look, Sandy may say, we, we're not doing that. But DeGrom is coming up for a new contract. Maybe, maybe you pivot and then you say to Soto and the Nationals, we, we have these players, and they got a lot of players, and we got an owner, not that this part would be public, but uh, I got an owner who's willing to spend $500 million on this guy. 
So let's let's make it happen. The challenge is this is not in your world. This is not a sign and trade thing. You know, that's the that's the biggest challenge. It's not like the not like the Nationals can say, well, Steve, what are you willing to pay? Well, we'll give him seven for five hundred million dollars. OK, well, we'll sign him to that and then we'll make a deal that that's not going to happen. But if I'm calling, I'm certainly going to my my guys and saying, let's take money out of the equation, which no one ever says, but he has the ability to do it. Let's see what we can we can work on.